So that does it for my first little mini haul of 20, 2017. 2017. And her older daughter, who I think is 13, 11. No. Oh, good lord. You know, you kind of get like a little bit of that like excited feeling about books. So I did pick up um, just a few that I've wanted. And of course, there's a couple that. Why, wah, 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 wah. Hi everyone, it's Audrey and welcome back to Chapter and Converse. Today's video is going to be my first 2019 book haul. And before you get too excited, it's only seven books, so it's nothing like crazy, crazy. I didn't, you know, kind of like hold off and then go totally nuts. But I did kind of make a promise to myself as part of my year, um, 2019 goals that I was going to be more thoughtful and more mindful about the books I was buying. And I was going to get away from that knee jerk reaction of like, like see it, want it, buy it, hear about it, want it, buy it, you know, walk into the store, walk out with my arms full of things. So like a lot of people out there, I have a lot of unread books on my shelf that I wanted to get to. I'm also trying to be savvy with my money, so I wanted to leverage my library. And I wanted to make sure that I wasn't just like buying books for the sake of buying them, but that I was buying things that I genuinely was interested in, that I genuinely wanted to bring into my life, and you know, just be more thoughtful about it. So I didn't buy anything in January. And kind of like early February, I was starting to kind of get that, you know, that itch. And I finally decided to pull the trigger. So I did a little book depository, a little bit of Amazon, um, and one was uh, a freebie from my dad. So if that counts as the haul, I'm counting it because it's new to me. So let's just talk about the books. So I'm gonna start with the book that really kind of started it all for me, and that's The Night Olivia Fell by Christina McDonald. And this was one of my most anticipated 2019 releases, but I was trying not to, like I say, just get it immediately. Um, and I wanna say this came out in January, but I kept hearing great things about it. It was like showing up on my Instagram. I was like reading about it. It was showing up online and the reviews are good. The book is doing really well. And since I hadn't bought myself anything, I decided, okay, it's time to treat myself and this is where I'm going to do it. So this is a book. Um, I'm 40 pages in. I literally just picked it up yesterday. So I didn't even like read it immediately. And I mean, part of sidebar why I didn't want to just go out and like continue to buy a bunch of books like I was doing last year is I was like buying them and shelving them and not reading them. So anyway, 40 pages in, day one. And this is a book about a teenage girl named Olivia and this is back jacket stuff. And kind of the, it, the book opens, her mother gets a phone call that she has been found um, kind of underneath a bridge. She's fallen off the bridge. She's in the hospital. She is brain dead. She will not wake up again, but they need to keep her on life support because she's pregnant. And this is news to her mother. And obviously her mother is devastated. She rushes to the hospital. She's a single mom. She's looking at her teenage girl and wondering like, how did we get here? What happened? And she's also noticing that her daughter has some bruises on her wrist and it looks like a struggle. And she's not convinced that this was an accident or that Olivia took her own life. So this is a story about how her mom is searching for the truth and searching to understand what happened to her daughter. And again, I'm 40 pages in, but what I'm enjoying is the writing so far. And also you're getting it from both perspectives. So you're getting Abby in the present day, and then you're getting her daughter, Olivia, um, from where I'm seeing it so far, they went like six months back. So I don't know if timelines are going to change or anything like that, but so far loving it so far really excited about it so um i'm really happy i picked it up i picked up a second book at amazon and i honestly don't remember where i read about this book but it was on my list it was one of those things i have a bad habit of like adding stuff to my amazon cart and then saving it for later like i don't even bother with the wish list because i will forget about it but if you add it to your cart you kind of are reminded of it and if the price changes you get little alerts that the price changed but anyway I bought While You Were Sleeping by Katherine Croft, and I have not heard of her before. She's written like, um, I think like five or six books, and this book actually came out a couple years ago. And it's psychological thriller, obviously, because that's what I gravitate towards. And this is about a woman named Tara, who lives a quiet life with her husband. She has a teenage daughter, an 11-year-old son, and she wakes up 
in the bed of her neighbor, Lee, and Lee has been stabbed to death. And she doesn't know how she got there, why she's there, and obviously she has no idea what happened to him. So panic obviously ensues, and according to the back of the book, what winds up happening is like her daughter kind of starts spiraling out of control and her husband starts acting really strange. So she thinks, Tara thinks they know what happened that night and she needs to figure it out kind of before anybody else does to sort of save herself and save her family and get to the bottom of it. So the tagline is kind of like, Tara made a mistake, but will one night cost her everything? So I'm excited to find out. This had really good reviews. Um, looks kind of fast paced, not a big book, but I'm excited to dip a toe in a new author. Um, so yeah, so I picked this one up. This is one of my, my risk leap kind of books, I guess. And the last book I got from Amazon is one that's been on my list for quite a while. And I'm kicking myself because I don't remember whose booktube channel I saw this on last year, but it got a rave review. Ugh, I need to write this stuff down. So I originally was going to buy it at the time for whatever reason I didn't stayed on my list. I can't get it at any of like my libraries here. Like I can't find it on, um, like Hoopla or, or Overdrive or anything like that. So this time around, it's sort of been lingering in my cart and I figured, all right, I'm finally gonna do it. Again, I'm treating myself. And it is Jane Doe by Victoria Helen Stone. And this is another author I hadn't heard of before, but the reviews are really good on this book. And it sounds like, I don't know, kind of a little bit up my alley in the sense that psychological thriller, but it's like a revenge fantasy. And the whole thing is this woman named Jane makes herself out to be the perfect woman for a specific man with the sole purpose of destroying him the way he destroyed someone who's important to her. So I love this. I don't know what he did. I don't know who he did it to, but she is out for revenge and she sounds hell bent on getting it. And I am down with that. I am, I am with her. Let, let's see what happens on this one. Um, the reviews are really good. Like I said, apparently it's a really, you know, it's a quick book. It's not a big book. Um, kind of, nail biting, page turning. Those are kind of the phrases that are associated with it. So again, I've been sitting on buying this for quite a bit. Um, haven't started it yet, obviously, but I am excited to dive into this one. The next book is one my dad was unhauling that I snatched up and it's The Art Forger by B.A. Shapiro. And he really enjoyed this. This is set in Boston, so completely up my street because I used to live there. And this is about, um, there was a heist at the Isabel Gardner Museum in 1990, I wanna say it was, and a whole bunch of paintings were stolen. And this book takes place 25 years later, so it's not a true crime, but it, you know, like, um, obviously takes that true crime piece of it. And one of the paintings that was stolen was a Degas painting. And what happens in this is this painting, 25 years later, shows up in the studio of a young artist. And her name is Claire, and the person who brings it to her wants her to forge the painting. And, you know, in exchange, she will get exposure in a big gallery and she'll get her own showing. And I'm guessing, you know, she's been trying to break into the art scene and this is sort of an offer she can't refuse. So she agrees to do it. And it says, as she begins her work, she starts to suspect this long missing masterpiece, the very one that had been hanging at Gardner for nearly a hundred years may itself be a forgery. So it's supposed to be, you know, spellbinding and mysterious and page turning. And well, obviously it's not going to focus on, I don't believe it focuses on the robbery itself. Like I think about like the Thomas Crown affair, the movie version, which is about the painting in the Metropolitan and you know, the painting that he returns and there's forgery in that. Um, so I'm very intrigued. I love me anything Boston. My dad really enjoyed it. So, um, I picked it up before he was able to donate it to somebody else. The next three books I have are from Book Depository and the book that sort of sparked this little buying, I wouldn't even call it a spree. Three books is not a spree, but I originally went on Amazon to get it and it actually was cheaper on Book Depository. So like while I was there, I did a little browsing around to see what else was happening. But the book that started this one is Dead Connection by Alifair Burke. And I talked about this book in my Alifair Burke um, author spotlight. And this is the first book in her Ellie Hatcher series. And there's four books in that. I wanna say a fifth one's coming maybe in a year or so. She's been doing lots of standalones. Um, but when I was talking about this book during the author spotlight, I realized 
I wanted to read it again and I don't have it anymore and I'm I'm like 99% sure it got like like um, like smashed up in my move like got crushed in a box or something um, because I wouldn't have broken up the set or I like I can't imagine I would have gotten rid of it on purpose but anyway wanted it back wanted to reread it so I picked this up and this is about um, our detective Ellie so she's kind of like a rookie detective in this one because it's the first book and she's been kind of chasing the serial killer and apparently now he's kind of targeting women through online dating so she becomes um you know kind of sets herself up on the site to be a target to try and trap him so this is the introduction to all of those characters um I'm excited to reread it again but I'm just happy to have my complete collection back again um, so that's why I picked up this one the next book I picked up is one that I spotted at Barnes & Noble here in New York back in January in hardcover, but it fortunately is a UK book that came out earlier there, so it's available in paperback there for much less. And it is Lies by T.M. Logan, and I 100% was drawn in by the cover of this book, and I love, it's like the dad at the top of the stairs um, with his son. And it's a UK book, so I'm assuming it takes place in the UK. I don't actually know too much about it. But this sort of reminded me like half of like walking up subway stairs in Manhattan, but obviously way cleaner than the subways here. Um, but it also was like the steps were like slightly reminiscent of Bethesda Terrace in Central Park. I don't know if that's just me, but I just was 100% drawn to the, the cover of this book and then read the little blurb on the back. And I was like, yeah, that sounds pretty good. So picked it up, super excited about it don't know a ton about it. Um, Lee Child has a nice rave on the back about it. The reviews are good. And the blurb, um, very quickly, Joe is just an ordinary, happily married man until one split decision, split second decision throws his life into crisis. When Joe sees his wife having a confrontation with a family friend, Ben, it's the first hint that she's been lying to him about everything. And when he steps in to protect her, a harmless shove knocks Ben to the ground and he's not moving. So mm, love it. Love the cover. Love the blurb. Excited for another new author um, and excited to have it for less than if I got it here because 100 percent, like I said at the beginning of this, my knee jerk reaction, old me, would have been see this book in Barnes and Noble, it's like 20 bucks and I'm just gonna buy it and that's gonna be the end of the story. So, slept on it for well over a month, still thinking about it, excited to have it and um, I'll let you guys know what I think of it. And the last book I got, I will admit is completely unnecessary, but I'm a sucker. Um, I bought Patricia Cornwell's Postmortem and this is the 20th anniversary edition this originally came out in 1990, so yes, this book is from 2010, so it's not like it's a brand new thing that came out. But I came across it, they were doing, they had like a super um, like discount sale section going on, and this was in it. And if you've been following me at all, you know that this is one of the books on my 2019 reread list. And I wanted, um, or I, I am, revisiting a handful of favorite books of mine. I'm trying to do one a month. And this is the first book in her Kay Scarpetta series. And Kay is the chief medical examiner down in Virginia. And it follows her and a whole cast of characters through probably like 20 books at this stage of the game. And, you know, this is the one that started it all. So in all fairness, I already own the book, but I own this sad pocket paperback little version of it. And I know I shouldn't care because the book is the book. But I mean, come on. And it was like a sale and it's an anniversary one. So it's, you know, it's special. So all in all, the original one, um, an old boss of mine gave this to me and she's the one who got me into all of this. So yes, there's a little bit of sentimentality to it, but at the same time, easier to ha like hold. These are just hard to read. I feel like a lot of people understand that these mass market paperbacks are a little bit rough. So yes, I didn't need this book, but I bought this book because I wanted this book. And it wasn't expensive, so judge me if you must, but this is the last book I got. And maybe April I'll read it. I keep saying I'm gonna, I'm not, I don't know. I'm not, I don't think I'm gonna read it in March, but you know, never say never, who knows. But maybe now that I have this pretty beautiful cover, like how nice is this? I should respect the original, but um, yeah. So I bought this, more than you need to know. First book in the series, got it, excited. 
So that's my mini haul for February. I'm excited um, to have a couple new books. I'm super excited about The Night Olivia Fell. But let me know if you guys have read any of these and also let me know like what you're buying or what you're eyeing or what you're maybe like sleeping on because you don't want to completely pull the trigger right away. So let's talk about all that and whatever else you want to talk about in the comments down below. But thanks for watching my haul today. Thanks for spending a bit of time here and I'll be back soon and hopefully you will be too. So thanks everybody. Bye.